Hello everyone, I'm Zishan Shah and welcome to Z Interactive YouTube channel, your own training institute. So today we will go through our next note, which is the curve note. You can use this note to perform a variety of operation. One of the operation which I really like is about how to create different sort of 3D profiles with it. So let's see how we can use this node. So first, what I will do here is that to create a curve node, the first thing I need here is basically a gradient. And it works uh, like really good with the gradient nodes. And I will choose the gra a gradient linear one here, this normal one. And then I will bring up my curve node here. So here I have the curve node, you can see, and here is my gradient node. So I will take my gradient and plug it in the curve node. So you can see it will have the same gradient inside it. And then I will, I will change this uh, scene from a rounded cube to a plain high res so that you can clearly see what's going on here. And then I will take all of these and put it inside here. The first thing that I want to do over here is that to go to the material, default, make sure the tessellation is on here, then edit. And then here I will increase my scale and then go back to my curve node. Let's see how it's working. So if you will notice that this curve node is giving me this sort of height. So wherever I have this black part, okay, it is here, which is downwards. And wherever there is a white part, this is here, which is upward. So it is going something like this in this V format. Now, if you will see uh, like, uh, like an angle. So if you will see in the curve node, the graph here, the curve, it is going in the same angle direction. And the same angle direction is here. So if I will go to my curve node and do this graph, if I double click it here, so it will give me a point. Now, just notice what happens to the graph here. If I move it upwards just like this and change it, you know, in this form, like S form, so you just notice here in the 3D view, this is converted in that S. Just notice here. Like this sort of a wave. Here I have the same wave. Now, if I would like to have one more wave here, like going up first, so I can double click it here and move this one up. And you can see, same thing is happening here. So just like this wave, I have the same wave. So this is how I can create these sort of things. Now I have few options here. Okay, I will keep it as it is. I will not change here. But at this point, I have the reset tangent. Like suppose if I will do some kind of a weird change here, now I don't know where it was before. So I can click here to the reset. It will reset it back to normal. Now the next one here is the toggle the selected keys between lock and unlock. Now what this is, if I will click it, so I can move freely two tangents at the, uh, at, uh, on its own. Okay. And if I will uh, select it and both of them will move together. If I reset it, so you can see that how it is moving. So this is how we can make this a different sort of a node. Now, one more thing I, we can do here is that like, suppose if this one I have, so I can uh, click over here and left side of the keys will become squared corner. So just note here, if I click it, this will become like a pointy here. Okay, and now this one will stay curved. And just notice what kind of result we are getting here. Okay, so exactly the same way I'm drawing, I'm getting the result. If I will move it down so you can see that, here also it is moving down. So whatever sort of a profile you want, it will create that sort of a profile here. So I can create something 
very uh, unique sort of thing. Let's unlock this one so we can make our own. Just like this. Okay. And maybe I can have one here. This one's smoother. And I can move this one down here. Then I can add someone, some here. Move it down. Okay. Now notice here this part. Okay. Why this is down? Because this is uh, here, this black. So if I take this one and move it up, so just notice what is happening. This one is also moving upwards. Okay, if I move it down, it will move down as well. Same thing on this side. If I take this point here, okay, and I will move down this point, same thing will happen there on this uh, on this side. So basically, to know the uh, like to uh, to know the curve, how it works better, you can see that the whatever graph you are constructing here, it will give the same profile. Now there are some interesting things that you can do with these nodes. So let's see them. So what I will do here is I'll just move it apart from here. Okay, and. Then I will press spacebar on my keyboard and I will take the transform node. Shift, select everything and move it to the transform. And take this one, the curve, and put it here. And after that, what I will do, what I will do here is that I will take all of them and scale it down. So I can have something like this. So notice how we are getting the result here. So if I go in the curve form, so you can see more clearly better how it looks like exactly the way I drew it here. It is here, okay? Now in the transform, I don't want any sort of a tiling. So I will go to the tile mode and I'll choose absolute and turn this to no tiling. So here there will be no tiling. Let's go back here and I can move it freely upward. Okay. So you can see that. Where we are right now. So you can see what kind of result I'm getting here. Now, still I can go back here in my curve and I can change some stuff here, like suppose to create something like flat here. Okay. So this sort of an effect, I will get it if I will move this in this direction just notice this part is here and then like you know if this goes like this so this is going like this as well okay now in the transform what we can do here is that i can uh, use my trapezoid uh, transform okay grayscale and I will plug everything here inside this with the shift key and then click this one. Now in the trapezoid, as you know, what it do is that it gives sort of an angle here. So if I will drop stretch, stretch it will it will go like this. If it will do on the bottom, it will go like this. So I will increase it till it goes to one. Or let's do one thing. Instead of one, so what I think is uh, like quite less, let's make it two. I'll make it two, so it will go much more higher. Okay, so I will have this sort of a profile here, if you will notice. Now, let's bring mirror, grayscale. I'll take everything from here. Okay, yeah, mirror, I got it. That's fine. So now I'm in the mirror. 
and in the mirror i want the mirror x axis y so that i will have it on the bottom as well and now what i can do is i can use a uh, transform okay take this one put it in the transform and i will press shift key and rotate so it goes like this so this one is just uh is on the top and bottom this one is on the sideways now i can add a blend node here and inside the blend node i can put this one on the top and this one like in the foreground and this one in the background and inside i can choose add and you will see that now they both are added and it, it's kind of giving me like a frame sort of a look so i will take all of these with the shift key from the mirror put it inside here and let's arrange them nicely you can see that we have what a sort of a frame this looks like a picture frame now okay so you can create these sort of things inside with the curve and not only this you can do a lot of things you can use a lot of different uh ways to do it you can use it with uh with your uh like directional warp to create your own sort of a warp angle with the gradient okay and you can use it for the in the flood fill also you can use it in different other uh like like uh tools so th this will help you a lot in in different like number of ways you can also use this in the uh in the th uh, in the shape extrusion extrude shape uh node so you can make your own profiles with the uh, with the by while using uh this because if you know here for example we can take the gradient suppose this one and we can connect our own uh curve node okay and then we can have a shape okay make a star shape And then we, what we can have, we can have our shape extrude. Now we can add this here inside. Okay. I will use custom input so I can have this. And in the profile, I can use a ver uh, vertical gradient and I can use this one. So you can see that we are getting this sort of a profile. But if I will go inside my curve, so you can see that this is the curve, uh, like profile it's making. If I double click it here, move it outward so you can see here, it's giving me this sort of a shape. I move this here you can see this is the star but if I move it here so you can see this shape okay it's kind of like this so maybe I want this to like poke out more so I can double click it here poke this more out and whatever I'm doing the changes you can see that that I'm getting it here this sort of thing I can do I can make my own gradients and so many things you can do with this. So wherever you have gradients, it works very good with the gradient. So gradient basically, uh, you can make your own gradients through it and you can make your own profiles through it. You can use it for your uh, other 3D models and stuff like that. So same thing if I have a directional warp, I can put this one in the input this one in the intensity input and then i can increase the intensity of this maybe 40 or whatever you want 
and I can increase this turn like this that or keep it this way and increase this intensity just notice how it is it is kind of pushing over here okay so just just like that if I click it here just notice this shape and this shape here so to better understand this if I move this on the top here just like that intensity a little bit more if I increase it just like this and go back here so you can see the shape the way it is going from here so this is how you can put this inside your uh, directional warp also and so many other things you can use this for so try out and see what are the possibilities here that you can use this for and i hope you have liked this lesson and i'm sure you will be waiting for the next lesson uh, our next lesson will be soon uh, uploaded which will be all about the dirt and dust node so uh, i would like to thank you all for all your support and I, I hope you will continue to support me please subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed to it yet and i will be posting a lot of new content so don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can receive all those notifications about those upload newly uploaded stuff and i hope uh you have liked my video if you have liked my video so please hit the like button also and leave your questions in the comment queries in the comment section below and i will surely answer them as soon as possible in the end i would like to mention that please watch all my videos online instead of downloading them otherwise uh, my hard work won't pay off like this so please do support me always watch my videos online so thanks once again everyone and soon we will meet in the next lesson Thank, uh, thanks and take care of yourself, stay healthy and keep learning. There is one important announcement I would like to make. I have started three great membership plans on my channel. I have introduced ZDI Friends membership plan, which will give you exciting perks like loyalty badges and priority on comments. I have also introduced ZDI Early Bird plan, which will give access to Z interactive tutorials way early before they become public. So you will get all these lessons at once and you can binge watch. Last but not the least, I have introduced ZDI Premium Plan, which will give access to advanced professional tutorials, which you will find it very, very expensive outside. And I will be giving this at a very low amount of price. So visit my channel now and click on the join membership to get more information. I hope you become one of my members. If you want to learn how to create a highly detailed prop procedurally using Substance Designer, so this premium tutorial series is for you. Join my premium membership plan on YouTube and get access to all premium tutorials. In this tutorial series, I will demonstrate how to use Substance Designer along with simple geometry to create a realistic smashed up retro television.